Hi guys, me again with another YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at another remake of an older gun that I did. This is the PP90M1 Mark II. This right here is the old, old render. I believe this was rendered, excuse me, using Blue Render. No, 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 no. This was using Studio's old built-in renderer. And as you can see, it is not as good as it should be, which is why we're going to switch over to this, which is a lot better looking than the old renderer that they had. As you can see, that this is, in fact, the second version of the PP90M1 that I've made down here in deep brown. The first version being this one up here. This is an old one. I did this a long, long time ago, and I just kind of did it to... Do it because it was a relatively simple model. Most of the PP90M1 is just kind of a square brick, uh, and because of that, I felt like I could kind of get away with making a kind of less detailed one up here on top. And I did for a little bit, and then I kind of grew as a Lego builder, and all of a sudden we end up with something like this. This is a lot more complicated of a model, and it retains a lot better uh looks as compared to this one up here so if we transfer over into ldd itself you can see that things haven't really changed over here it's all pretty standard looking and we can talk about this so let's go ahead and hide this out so that we don't gotta look at it as much and focus primarily on the new model so first things first is I would like to unfold the stock so that that gets out of the way. We can start looking at it more. The problem is I don't know if it's going to cooperate with us or not. So this is held in using these pieces on both sides. And the problem with that is it gets a little wonky with two Technic pieces in there. So what we're going to do is remove one of them. And we're going to flip the stock over until it gets... Oh, I thought it stopped. I guess not. Until it gets to a, about there. I could have sworn I had taken and put little wings out on the bottom here to stop it from going that far. But I guess not. It's something that I'm going to have to take a note of to come back and redo. So it folds out like so. And then we get this stock. It sits down just like this. Uh, this was built using a whole bunch of bracket pieces, as you can see, and then a whole bunch of tiles on the bottom of it so that we can get the overall look that we're going on here for the, the swooping portions of the stock. Once it gets to here, you can unfold this section of it. Oh, of course. Let's just delete this out and now try it. Yeah, imagine that. It all works when there's only one of the brackets and not two of the brackets it's, it's kind of weird, like with that led and then boom we have an unfolded stock and then if we kind of sit here and fold it back over you can see that it just folds over basically so it's kind of how that works pretty simple so now we can actually see a lot more of the gun in its entirety so now that we can see a lot more of the gun, let's take a look at particularly the grip area. And this is where the grip changed dramatically as compared to the old model. So if we can just kind of slowly adjust our view to right about here. So as you can see on the old model, I went with a just straight up and down build just using bricks. And they're kind of offset just a little bit to get the shape going on. For the new build, what I did is I used uh, my patented it's not really patented, but it is my technique. Uh, technique going on through here, so it connects back here and up here, and then the whole inside is actually hollow still. I used this originally as a magazine well for pistols, but I used it here as a pistol grip. As you can see, there's a couple different bricks going in all sorts of different directions to achieve the rounded look in the back here, and it's offset so that we get a slight curve. And then on the front, it's actually curved using actual pieces. And it's all at the appropriate angle that it should be. Nice and closed off. Not too much gaps going on here. Really happy with this one. 
Up at the top here, you can see it actually slopes inwards just a little bit, as you can see, so that whenever you have your finger sitting here, it's a nice and comfortable slope into the actual trigger guard itself. Trigger guard, as you can see, is pretty basic, just slight curves going on here. This has a brick built trigger, but it uses a different style of trigger mechanism than what I usually use. This uses the old, old hinge style pieces. Uh, pretty simple, basic going on there. And then there's a couple of just small details going on here. A little bit of a flare out here on the actual model. The pin sitting right there. Don't particularly know why, but it's there. Uh, something that is missing is actually a magazine release. It's supposed to go right in here. I thought I had made one, but apparently not. So bear with me on that one. Sorry about that. The main body of this gun is actually four studs wide. As you can see here, it's rounded up on top. Give it a nice clean look. Back sight's pretty simple, front sight pretty simple, nice rudimentary. This has a shell ejection port that's basic brick built, and it's connected to the charging handle up here, which goes into the gun like so. It has a small curve look to it, except that uh, it's not using perfect curves, so it's got a good look to it, but it doesn't like, overly complicate anything. And then the actual kind of this frame of the gun is actually at five studs wide uh, compared to the gun's four studs wide. You can see on this version of the gun up here, most of it was four studs wide and I just used plates to get that kind of illusion that it was stuck out a little bit. But this overall looks way better down here than the one up here. For the disassembly pin, I kind of switched up a little bit of the method as well. Just to kind of flip these pieces around just a little bit. Looks a lot better. And then the magazine is way different uh, between both of these models. This one up here, it's this weird kind of tube thing, but not really a tube thing. And then down here, it's actually a tube. And the pieces that I used, you can actually load rounds into it. So I've kind of made bullets that you could uh, load into the actual gun. You can see them. Uh, this it looks a lot lighter, but here it's a lot darker. It's a small, it's a more smoky, translucent color. Um, so, for the sake of getting them in here, I put them in here in this perfect circle. But kind of how I imagine this working is, uh, you would basically take and put a kind of like a four stud wide. Probably a three stud wide cylinder going through the middle of this and then it'd be really painstaking But you would take and Spiral these bullets into the actual around the three studs and you would hold the bullets to the three studs with rubber bands uh, In place and that would serve as our spiral helical magazine, which we have and a good way to kind of replicate the smoky translucent look so that you guys can like if you're shooting the gun, you can see the actual magazine itself, basically. Yeah, it's a little complicated. Uh, this locks into place up here. Pretty simple, using these pieces right here. And then it's supposed to lock into place in the back using the magazine release, obviously, but I uh, don't have one, so awkward. And then we have our little winding tool. So this is pretty simple. You take and you grab onto this whenever you reload the magazine, and then you sit and Flip it around a whole bunch of times until it winds up. And it just as nice and easy. That's pretty much it for this model, the PP90 M1 Mark II. Overall, uh, a lot better looking, a lot more uh, detailed, and a lot more worthy of having my name attached to it. So that's pretty much it for this gun video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. I will see you guys later in another YouTube video.